So first thing first, first things first. So first things first, first thing first. How do you say that? Oh my God, am I losing it? Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones. Welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about rhyming and I wanna share a couple activities that I find really help promote students' phonological awareness when it comes to rhyming. So let me grab those activities. I have a little freebie for you and we will dive right in. While I grab those, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can see all of my teaching videos. Let's go. So first I should mention that rhyming is a phonological awareness skill and phonological awareness is kind of a metacognitive skill. So students are thinking about what they're doing. And in this instance, they are thinking about the sounds they are hearing within different words. And with rhyming, of course, they need to be able to hear if the two sounds sound alike. And there's two parts of rhyming that you want students to work on. You want them to be able to identify rhymes. Do these two words sound alike? Do they rhyme? Yes or no? And you want to see if students are able to generate their own rhymes. So if I say the word bat, can you think of some other words to rhyme with bat? Before I dive into the activities, I do feel it's important to mention that when it comes to rhyming, there's no downside to teaching rhyming, right? It is something that will benefit students greatly in terms of their reading, and it will also help students develop a strong phonological awareness. Now, that being said, if a student struggles with rhyming, that doesn't mean they're going to struggle with reading. So there shouldn't be an emphasis or a strong overemphasis on rhyming because students don't need to know how to rhyme in order to read. So while it can help them, if you have a student that struggles, don't worry about it, don't be too stressed out. Instead, you do wanna focus on other phonological and phonemic awareness activities where students are blending and segmenting and manipulating different phonemes. So that being said, let me share a few of my favorite activities for your younger kindergarten and first grade students to practice rhyming. So I mentioned earlier that, you know, rhyming comes in two parts. You want students to be able to first identify if two words can rhyme, yes or no. And then you also want them to be able to produce their own rhymes as well. So if you give them a word, they should be able to produce another word that rhymes with it. So a couple games to get started with identifying the rhymes, seeing if two words rhyme or not, are to simply use a bunch of rhyming cards. And here I have an example, here's 12 different rhyming pictures. And I actually have a freebie for you. It will be 24 of these cards and I'm gonna give you a couple games you can use with them right now. So with all of these cards, one of my first and favorite games to play is called Mix and Match. And I do this with a bunch of different skills. So plug in whatever you want, but here we're gonna do it with rhyming. And for this, you would give one one card to each member of your classroom. So each student will have their own card. Let's pretend you're all sitting at the rug or they're sitting in their desk. They will receive their card, they will look at it, and they will need to know what it says. So important with all three of these games, students need to know what this word is and they should repeat it to themselves. I often find that when um, we're giving pictures or clip art, sometimes it's like what it, like even the teacher, sometimes I will get something and I'm like, I don't know what that is. So at the bottom of these free cards, I do have what each word is, what it represents. So here we have mug and hug. So if a student doesn't know what it is, you help them with that first. The next step after everybody has their card and they're looking at it and they know what it says, they all stand up and they mix around the room. And their goal is to mix around the room and find their match. So in this case, they would have to find a word that rhymes with their word or a picture that rhymes with it. And I should also mention that with these three activities I'm going to share. I am showing you picture cards and I gave you this freebie of picture cards, but if you are in first grade, you may want to mix up, maybe you have one picture and one um, rat and hat, maybe you have one picture and one word, maybe you wanna have them match that way, or maybe you have two words, it doesn't really matter. If you're in kindergarten and your students can't read yet, then yes, you want to focus on just pictures, but in first grade, you can switch it up. Another game to play with these cards is memory. I talked about memory 
uh, a couple of videos ago. Everyone knows how to play memory, but I talked about it a few videos ago where I shared some small group games you can play on Zoom and I even shared a free memory template for you. So if you are teaching virtually right now and you wanna do that with rhyming, go grab that memory sheet there and you can either type rhyming words behind each of those little post-its or you can get some pictures that rhyme and hide them there too. And lastly with these cards, if I am in a small group, sometimes I will just put a bunch of the cards in a bin or in a hat and students kind of have to reach their hands in, they pull it up, they say what the word is and then they reach in their hand again and they say the other word and see if they rhyme. So you can either have one student doing it at a time where they pull the two cards out and they say yes or no it rhymes or what I've had sometimes them do is the student will be the picker, so they will pull out the two cards and they have to say what they are, so hug and rug, and then the other students in the small group either have to give a thumbs up, yes it rhymes, or a thumbs down, no it doesn't, which kind of involves everybody in the group. So all of these picture cards will be down in the description for free for you guys. And don't forget, like I said, if you are in first grade, you may want to switch up some of the pictures and then just add an index card or print out a word instead of the picture. But either way, up to you. Okay, activity number two, I feel like is the most obvious one. And that is to make sure you are reading poems or nursery rhymes or rhyming books often and repeatedly. You want to make sure that students are getting multiple chances to hear and read those poems themselves. In my first grade classroom, we always had poetry folders where students would have ample opportunities to read the poem with me. So we would, I would read it, they would listen, we would echo read it, we would choral read it, they would partner read it. By the end of the week, they had read that poem maybe five or six times, and they were able to really find the words that rhyme within the poem. Now, typically I would use phonics poems, and I will show you an example of that right here. I have talked about these a few times. It is one of my favorite activities to do. So depending on what you're doing with the poem, my phonics poems were rhyming, so they always rhymed. So even if you weren't just focusing on the phonics pattern or the phonics skill that I choose to include in those poems, which hint hint are often the rhyming words, but even if you weren't focusing on that, you could read it, identify the phonics skill, and you could also listen for rhymes. And if you don't have poetry folders in your classroom or you don't use them regularly, you can still go ahead and just search for any fun kids poetry or kids rhyming books. One of my absolute favorite rhyming books is Giraffes Can't Dance. There are so many skills you can teach with that book, but it is a really fun rhyming book for you to use with your students. And what I would often do is I would have us pick out one or two of our favorite pages and I would record them on chart paper or you could even put it in a pocket chart and again repeatedly read those phrases. So just like with my phonics poems I would have me read it while they listen, we would echo read it, we would choral read it, students would identify all of the rhyming words, they could clap when they hear the rhyme, they can jump when they hear the rhyme, they can do a little dance when they hear the rhyme, whatever it is, but just getting them listening and hearing those rhymes over and over and over and repeating them themselves. Also, I often like to, once we get comfortable with the poem and they've read it a couple times, I like to go ahead and cover up some of those rhyming words. So that way the next day when we read it, maybe, maybe I do it like before they leave one day and then the next morning they come in, we read the poem and it's covered up and they have to generate that word. So some of them are doing it from memory, but oftentimes they also know that it has to rhyme with the previous word, which gives them a hint about what the word could be. All right, the last activity I have for you is to do some discrimination activities. And that means see if students can discriminate between which two words rhyme and which one does not rhyme. And I like to do this for a couple different reasons. Number one, it can be pretty tricky, so you get students really listening and hearing for that ending part of the word. And another thing I learned as I did more research around phonological awareness and rhyming is that oftentimes we always say that, you know, two words rhyme if they have the same ending. And that can be kind of confusing if we are thinking about the same ending meaning the same last letter, which we as teachers aren't meaning, but that might be what your students are kind of taking away from what you're saying. So what I like to do is I like to show three different words and I would do this in my first grade classroom. So cat, mat, and part. Here when they look at the words, they can see that they do all end in T, so they have technically all the same ending, but they don't have that same ending part. So students need to look at the three words, they need to listen to them aloud and figure out which one does not belong. 
Other examples would be top, mop, and clap. Again, they all have that P on the end, but top and mop have OP and clap has AP. And instead, what I like to have students do is once they figure out which word does not belong, they can see if they can generate a word that does belong in the trio of rhyming words. Now that activity is something I would usually do as like a warm up before we start our guided reading groups or maybe just a quick phonics warm up or when students come to the carpet, maybe a morning reading warm up. I don't usually do that as one big whole lesson in first grade, but again, it's just another way to have students practice their phonological awareness and practice that rhyming. So there are three easy and fun rhyming activities to do with your students. I will go ahead and link the free rhyming cards down in the description below and I will also go ahead and link my phonics poems just in case you're interested in those as well and like I mentioned at the beginning of this video you don't want to overemphasize rhyming you really do want to focus on segmenting blending and manipulating different phonemes to help your students learn how to become better readers I do plan on creating some videos with some activities for each of those skills as well if that is something you're interested in please let me know down in the comments and as always if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell. That way you're notified of all my new videos. See you next time. Bye.